John, you have got tons yes, of real estate data and statistics, I think, trying to give everybody an idea of what they can expect, especially in terms of mortgages in 2020. So let's dive right in. Yeah, it's a year we're really excited about uh, in the mortgage industry. We think there's a lot of opportunity for uh, uh, people to buy homes, people to finance homes. Uh, and the biggest mover on that is interest rates. Uh, I mean, we've talked about this a couple of different times on the show, um, but we can't talk about it enough. You know that uh, in, at this time last year, yep. uh, the average 30-year fixed mortgage rate was running around 4.75. And, and John, well, I hate to correct you, but I saw plenty of them at five as well. At that time oh, yeah. of the year, late the year before, it was 5% was kind of the number. It's really amazing when you think about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. There certainly was some some higher than that. But uh, but if we just take 475, yep. we're now trading a whole point or more below that Yep, yep. Um, is, is where we're starting this year. And, and the, the effect of that is really striking. I mean, on a $300,000 loan, uh, a family's going to save $168 per month in real income savings uh, on the same mortgage this January compared to last January. Talk about what programs are going to be available uh, to make it easier to get approved for mortgage, things like that in 2020. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, with along with interest rates being as low as they've ever been, you now have really for the first time in the last 13 years, uh, credit is easier to get. Uh, is the simple way to say that. Whether that's uh, programs coming into the market that can they can deal with less than perfect credit. Yep. You know, you've had a ding in the past. Uh, the credit scores aren't where you would, would want them to be. There's options for you now that weren't there two or three years ago. Down payment is still the biggest hurdle for a first-time home buyer to right. get into the buying market. There's more and more assistance programs becoming available that can partner with the, the, the old standby programs like FHA to, to provide assistance and help with the down payment. John, give us some additional uh, forecast or your forecast for the housing market in 2020, please, sir. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, we expect it to be a really good year, especially in the Atlanta metropolitan area. Uh, what's really driving things is a combination of the strong labor market, unemployment's at all-time lows. It's amazing. And when that happens, we're, well, it's, it, that's been the case for several years, but now what's catching up to that is strong wage growth. Yep. We're seeing in, in people make more and more income and getting raises that, they've, that they haven't received in, you know, in, in prior years. Yep. You combine that with those low interest rates that we talked about earlier, what that means is that, that the average buyer can afford to purchase more home, a higher purchase price with the same what was disposable income for them uh, in the in the past. So, John, so that's really driving the market. When you started sharing this information with me, you got me so excited. And I remembered seeing a chart from the National Association of Realtors that says historically the average family in the U.S. spends 21.2% of their income on housing. Mm -hmm. But it said, listen to this, in September of 2019, and it's actually lower than that now, that the average American household spends 15.2%. And it's yep. really because the, the prices of the houses have gone up, but the cost of purchasing have gone down. Mm -hmm.